When we last left my reading with Backstreet Boy, A.J. McLean, and his fiancée, Sarah, A.J.'s grandmother was dominating the session. She talked about missing some of his career success and made a reference to his childhood, specifically how it prepared him for the scrutiny that comes with being a public figure. And before we get to one of the most poignant messages of the reading, his grandmother causes him to spill the beans about a lifelong phobia. She's also making me feel like, and this might sound really nuts, but I'm going to say it, do you wrestle alligators? Are you planning on, like, going on an episode of a crocodile hunter? Or are you going to be going to Australia and finding yourself swimming in a swamp? I have no idea what this is. But she's making me feel like I have to tease you, and it is a joke, about the alligator. Uh, I have a fear of frogs. I mean, it's something to do with amphibian. Um, I don't know. Uh, Takes a brave man to admit that on TV. Yeah. Hey, thank you. I, know. I just want you to know that your grandmother is teasing you about an alligator. Not a, not a frog. It's an alligator. There's got to be something that would be... I ran over an alligator. You ran over an alligator? Yeah. Well, we all did, actually. We all did that day. We ran over an alligator on the way to a rehearsal. Did she act more like mom to you sometimes? Yes. Okay, because she's not making me feel like she's just your grandmother. She's making me feel like she's the person who's in charge. She feels like she did as good of a job as she possibly could have. But she understands that, you know... I'm so sorry, this is on TV. She understands that you're very thick-headed and stubborn and sometimes you still don't listen. So just please, please remember that she imprinted upon you stuff that is like, you know, do the right thing and know the right thing. And But there's a... There's a I don't want to say rebellious, that's not the word I want to use. It's like, you'll argue over the same issue. He'll agree with you, but he won't let you know that he's agreeing with you. And it'll take three days for him to come around to the same exact thing that you were saying. Tell me. She's telling me to tell you to be patient because it's not a you thing, it's a him thing. <laughs> I could see the arguments now, like three months from now or three weeks from now. <laughs> this is what your grandmother was talking about. <laughs> This is serious. My whole just energy just, just dropped. You were sitting, you weren't driving, you were, in, you were in a car, you were... It was after she passed, and you had your own goodbye privately. Nobody knew you did this, and she's making me feel like she wants me to validate. She heard what you had said. Part of what you had said was an apology, because there was like, I'm sorry that I couldn't. I'm sorry that I didn't. I'm sorry that I, I, I didn't have the opportunity. A lot of this stuff, she's making me feel like you have to understand. She understands it was out of your control. She's making me feel like either you wrote, sang, produced, or did something in her honor, but it never aired, or it never, it never made it to people, like people never heard it. I was going to write a song for the funeral, but instead I wrote a poem instead. But it was supposed to be lyrical. Like with music? I wanted to do okay. it that, that would make uh, That would make sense. That's why I was like, okay, it's a song, but it's not. I'm like, I didn't understand that. She is making me feel like either her husband is now dating um, or that either he's very active socially. I, I, I see more people around him for some reason. Do you know, is there any reason why? Yeah, he has a, he has a nurse that's around him and he also has, he lives with my, with my uncle and my aunt and he's got a lot of family around him. All but that time. has to be different from when she was here. So I feel like this yes. has to be different because I feel like you know it might have maybe went from just them together and now it's like him and 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 family. Yeah, it did. She feels confident like that's a that's a good thing. It built on. Okay, yeah. that like that's a good thing. He does have a weakness in his leg, so I feel like there's a problem with the leg. He's had that for a while, from what she's showing me. The connections continue for AJ and Sarah after the break, but first AJ reflects on his grandmother's passing. It's been a little rough, especially around her birthday and around Christmas. More so on my, on my grandfather, because, you know, they were very close. And they were married for 59 years. You were in a car, you were... It was after she passed, and you had your own goodbye. She's making me feel like she wants me to validate. She heard what you had said. I went to the grocery store to get coffee, and I came back. It was no more than five minutes, and she had passed in that period of time. And at the time, I was also heavy into drugs and alcohol and uh, before I got clean and um, I was a little under the influence that same evening because of the fact that she was you know on her deathbed went out to my car and sat in my car and kind of had my own little private moment 
I also did the same thing before that with her in the room after she had passed by, by ourselves. And I said a lot of stuff, and the fact that she heard it all is awesome. She's making me feel like I have to tease you, and it is a joke about the alligator. And there's a place in Florida called Gatorland, which is a very famous tourist attraction, which is just gators. And one of them had escaped, and we all, each of us in every car, ran over the one that escaped. And I told her about it, because it was funny. It was sad, but it was funny. And that's the only thing I could think of. That and my fear of frogs. Call me a weirdo, but it's, they gross me out. <laughs> they really freak me out. More with AJ and Sarah when Crossing Over re